Toast Team, the best for you. Hi guys, uh, my name is Tahir Khan and uh, today I'm going to be talking about service departments. I do run a service department business in London and I've got my own estate agency as well in Uxbridge which, which is going to be up and running in about one or two weeks time. So, the hot topic for today is service departments. Um, just wanted to like, I mean, briefly explain what service department is. Well, it is basically um, a hotel kind of apartment, the way you provide the, um, uh, that kind of ambience, that kind of like uh, quality service to your clients, to your guests, and that kind of service. That's why it's called service departments. So you basically, you know, rent out a property on a monthly basis from the landlord and uh, what you do you just basically rent it out on a nightly or on a weekly basis so you charge like for example the landlord charges you about one thousand pounds per property for example not in london but somewhere else like i mean outside london and you just get that property dress it up like a five-star hotel and you just uh, rent it out like 100 pounds per night so you make at least uh, if you get like 100 percent occupancy in that property you would get like about three thousand pounds per property um well that's um uh that's just like a figure that can be achieved um normally in london the occupancy rate is like 85 to 94 percent and uh, outside london um, across the uk the occupancy rate for service department is 70 percent okay so basically with service departments you you pay the landlords like I mean the fees or the, the rent up front and um, there's no voids there's no tenant issues because you get like I mean tenants in advance and rent is going to be paid to their landlord in advance and uh, basically you do like all these small cosmetic refer for the landlord so you give them that sort of kind of service um, so how do you set up like uh, in terms of um, how you're going to be legally compliant with this business so once you find the property you can basically like i said like mentioned before you can just um get uh, on a rent to rent basis that's what i've been doing to be honest i've got three properties of my own and i've got like jv partners and got three part three properties with them as well so they manage like those three and i manage three of them myself so basically all of my properties are like on rent to rent basis but there are other methods that you can acquire the properties as well for example you can like i mean buy the property you can just jo join venture with the landlord and pay him like a little bit more rent than the normal or you can buy or well, you can get it like a lease option and run it as a service department as well so there are like i mean different methods that you can use to acquire the property so how do you how do you basically set it up and be legally compliant you have to get it get yourself registered with the property ombudsman since you're going to be letting the property out on a nightly or weekly or monthly basis um, apart from that um, you have to be like legally um, compliant in a way that you have to have like property on um, uh, your property um, registered in terms of uh, getting um, indemnity insurance and in in terms of public liability insurance because real people is going to be staying in your properties so you have to make sure that you just get fully compliant and fully covered in case something gone tips up so they don't sue you or take any sort of legal action against you uh, and the third thing is since you're going to be having access to uh, the guests or the people coming in and staying in your property you're going to be having access to their sensitive data by me calling us by me saying sensitive data i meant uh, you're going to be having access to their data um, which is their credit cards and those kind of things and their addresses and their passport details and stuff so you have to have um, uh, you get yourself like I mean uh, registered with the data protection agencies as well just to get yourself like I mean fully compliant and fully uh, covered and um, and apart from that um, since your property is going to be used a, uh, on a daily or regular basis you have to have um, smoke detectors, you have to have uh, carbon monoxide detectors, you have to have fire, um, a fire register where you need to keep in the property and uh, need to be um, tested on monthly or weekly basis. 
and uh, this has to be recorded and kept in the property. So apart from that, um, you, I will come to the advertising side of things. Once you just like, I mean, become fully compliant, you, how do you advertise your service department? You, need, you can, say, you can uh, advertise your service department uh, by um, you know, applying three foot rule. Three foot rule is like when you, in, in your three foot rule, all the contacts that you know, all the people that you know, you just basically make them aware of what you do and basically tell them you know, that you have got the service departments and the people can like, come and stay there. So the word of mouth advertising is the most powerful one and they can tell or delegate it to other people and that's how you grow your business up. And apart from like a word of mouth advertising, you can do social media advertising uh, through Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, uh, Twitter is like one of the best um, modes of advertising, they, what, what they call it, like uh, advertising or... Oh, guys, would you call that sexual enhancement like um, medicine? Viagra. Viagra, yeah. So it, what they call it, Twitter is just like uh, another uh, mode of advertising on on Viagra or something. Okay, so that's just basically uh, uh, advertising on social media. You can also find um, or advertise it on LinkedIn as well. You can find like, I mean, big corporate companies there. LinkedIn has got like so many companies registered there. So you can approach the HR managers. You can approach the procurement managers over there and then um, tell them what you do, tell them where the properties are located and um, yeah, get them on board and try to get them interested if they wanted to have uh, your property basically, um, you know, uh, let it out for their members or for their staff. Um, and apart from like social media, you can also advertise it on the newspapers, like in hospitals, talk to their like, I mean, staff, to HR managers uh, around universities. You can basically tell people, uh, you know, or like, I mean, put yourself like a, a leaflet or something on a, on a, no, a notice board in university, in the libraries, wherever you go. So if you go like, I mean, to golf courses and stuff, you can just leave your leaflets in, over there in the car wash. So um, everywhere, like basically like uh, where there is like public, you can, you know, leave your leaflets or advertise somehow one way or the other. Or in the newspapers, most of the people do that. That's a very efficient way of uh, advertising yourself as well. And apart from that, there's, there are like, I mean, other portals, like which are really, really uh, beneficial as well. Like for example, booking.com, which, which, which basically um, accounts for 95% of like service department advertising alone in the, um, in the beginning of like, I mean, a, a service department journey. So you know what, if somebody's starting like the, their journeys, booking.com accounts like for about 95% of their advertising and their, their bookings. The bookings mainly like come from booking.com. Um, and uh, there are like other portals as well, like for example, Airbnb, Holiday Lettings, Expedia, um, you know, there's like about 38 portals where one can advertise their properties. Uh, into, well, I'm talking not about like, I mean, ordinary properties, I'm talking about service apartment um, properties. Um, and um, so yeah, that's advertising. So that that's just basically gain yourself like I mean clients, gain yourself um, guests, gain yourself corporates, gain yourself you know um, all of those contractors who might be like I mean coming and working in a nearby your community where your property is located. So yeah, you can basically like run around the corporate vans where they be, might be dropping off their staff and then talk to their driver and get like, I mean, the company's address. And you know, there might be like a very uh, good way of advertising yourself as well by approaching their like um, HR managers or administrators and stuff and talk to them and say to them if they needed any sort of like, um, you know, short term accommodation for their staff, you can provide or fulfill their need. Uh, so, um, okay, so that just covers the advertise, uh, advertisement side of uh, service department. So we were talking about the management aspect of service departments. So we'll crack on with that. So for the management side, you use a, uh, something which is called channel manager. So you advertise, for example, on all the 38 portals 
and all the 38 portals bring all the different book bookings from um, different sort of like, I mean, uh, portals, and then they, f they bring it like a, to a funnel, and the funnel basically, all of those like, I mean, portals go like a calendars and stuff so I mean to avoid double booking and stuff so he just brings it to a funnel and that funnel uh, is just basically like connected to your channel manager so the channel manager like wh whichever like portal the booking is coming from he blocks out the calendar and avoid uh, double booking okay so that's like I mean the main main function of channel manager and, and he does like I mean set like I mean the rates for the whole year and he also like um, it does like I mean loads of like other things. He just send like um, the letters or the the management uh, the short like like management agreement to the guests and stuff as well, and make them like I mean sign it in order like uh, for you to avoid any sort of chargebacks, uh, you know chargebacks that they just haven't booked it or something. At least you would have a proof that they have booked it because they have like I mean signed and send it back to you. And then you can just basically like uh, you know pre-test your cleaners and. Uh, you know, um, you can just basically like I mean, tell them what to do, send them like uh, uh, the, the daily stuff, like, uh, you know, use it as CRM, uh, you know, use them like, um, uh, send it to like their mobile phones, what sort of tasks they need to just carry out for a particular day or particular um, uh, date. Um, you know, so that's just like all about the channel manager. The ch apart, apart from that, like, I mean, from the management perspective, you need to have um, at least like a good, uh, you know, one or two people um, in the start of the journey uh, to basically like advertise, to um, look after like the bookings and to um, to call like uh, the guests in case they don't pay, uh, you know, and do all of those like I mean aspects and just uh, to chain like I mean the rates on daily basis uh, to get like a good KPI on, um, on, on, on all of those properties that you have advertised on different sort of portals. Uh, and apart from that, uh, apart from like the person that does like all the admin side of things, you need to have at least um, one or two people who can basically like, uh, uh, who, who does like all the check-in and check-outs for you. And uh, you can have like, I mean, one good cleaner that you can basically vet and, you know, uh, get like, a, you know, uh, pass like all of the uh, criteria that you're looking for from him or her. And uh, as a backup, you need to have like another co company uh, if in case like something goes wrong, you need to have another company that needs to, uh, you know, go and do like, I mean, all of the cleaning and stuff of your apartments. If like, I mean, the, the main cleaner gets like sick or uh, he or she can turn up for that day. Um, and um, so the, the cleaner could be like your ears and eyes in, in the property as well after the check uh, or the guest checks out that you can ask the cleaner to uh, check the property out for you. They check the inventory, you know, that everything is like um, in its place. Nothing is broken. There's no stains on the carpet and there's no, no damage like provided to the property. And just like to avoid any sort of like, um, you know, uh, any sort of um, damage to the property, you can charge the guests like some kind of deposit. It can't be like, I mean, that much, but it has to be like at least, you know, uh, around 250 to 300 pounds, you know, which could basically give you that sort of peace of mind that in case like the guests like might be drunk, I mean, nobody like intentionally damage your property anyway, but in case like they will be drunk or they bring somebody else from outside, they, you know, they don't do like um, any, they don't mess up with your property or they don't do any, they don't like, I mean, break or vandalize anything. Uh, so you need to have like that sort of like um, uh, deposit just as a peace of mind in, in case something goes wrong then you could charge the guests um, and then tell them that you've just like uh, done this and because of that you're charging them. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is tax efficient, how you could be uh, tax efficient in your service department business. <clears throat> With the service department um, you basically, um, when you just basically like, I mean, buying a prop, a normal property, you pay a stamp duty on that property, and um, you know, on the second and the third property, you pay like, I mean, about three percent until unless on the normal properties you get like six in a row, then you just you could avoid paying any sort of stamp duty, which is about three percent. But on the service apartment, on the first property, from the first property, you can just like, um, as long as there's like a planning permission in place. And you could uh, ask or argue with the landlord to 
uh, you know, get like a planning permission for the property at the time of the sale, at the time of the exchange, then you're not going to be paying any sort of um, uh, any sort of like I mean stamp duty on it. And the same applies to the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth property. You're not going to be paying any sort of stamp duty on the service departments, and you know what? If you change like um, the, the the change of use from C3 residential to C1, that would improve or that would just um, the, the the price of the property is going to go up as well in the longer run. So you once you do, at the time when you're going to be selling the property, uh, the property is going to be sold for more price than the normal residential. Uh, and the, the, other, the other thing I'm going to be talking about tax efficiency is that when you're just registering your service department business, you don't have to register it like an individually under your name because, um, you know, individually you're going to be paying about 45% tax. If you register it like under a limited company or a, um, a limited liability partnership, then you're not going to be paying... Um, uh, for a limited company, you're going to be paying 20% compared to 40% individually. But in a li limited liability partnership, if you just form a limited, limited liability partnership or LLP, you're going to be paying just individual, like I mean, taxes. Um, each member of the uh, company is going to be paying individual taxes and um, on the profits that they're going to be earning. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, with limited, limited liability partnership, for example, I've got an example over here. If your earning is like hundred thousand pounds, then you can basically with this hundred thousand pounds you can pay. Uh, for example, there's like three partners in the company. You can pay eleven k each to to each partner. That just accounts to about thirty three grand. So if you take out like I mean thirty three grand from hundred thousand, that basically leaves you with sixty seven thousand. So with the, with the same sort of um, uh, structure, if you pay. The dividends of all of those three partners so for example if you just like i may pay eleven um, thousand dividends to all, each partner they did this that just like sums up to be thirty three thousand again so if you take out like um you know thirty three thousand again from sixty seven thousand how much that's going to be guys sixty seven thousand minus thirty three thousand mm. how 30, much thirty one thousand thirty four thirty four Okay, thirty-four thousand. So we, we make get... thirty-seven. It's more. It's better. All right. So let's just like uh, let's hypothetically <laughs> think that's thirty-seven thousand. So we we no. got left like with thirty-seven thousand. Okay, my main oh, Thomas, like said. Oh, it's thirty-four. I think so it's thirty-four. Yeah. Yeah, thirty-four thousand. So let's just like I'm um, assume that we just like I mean got left with thirty-four thousand uh, pounds. So we can just basically, uh, we can just you know, um, take pensions out of like I mean that thirty-four thousand as well. Let's, let's say like I mean pension for each partner is like about five thousand each. So we just minus like I mean 50, fifteen thousand from from that thirty four thousand. How much we got left? Thirty four minus fifteen, guys. Can you could you help me out? I'm not very good with maths. So that's gonna be nineteen thousand, right? So nineteen thousand we got left from hundred k. We got like I mean nineteen k left right now. So from nineteen k you can you can also claim the company expenses. For example, you bought, I mean, each of these partners bought themselves cars or they've like, I mean, done some sort of like, um, uh, they've just spent like on petrol or they've just taken like work related holidays. All of those can be like uh, claimed back against the expenses as well. So for example, let's say just like out of that 19,000, you have spent like about 17,000 for the whole year. So just take away 17,000 from that 19 grand you walk away with 2,000 profit. So about what? Well, and just like to sum it up, guys, from the summary is that like out of 100,000, you just like, I mean, God left just only 2,000 just right now by end of the year. So you're going to be liable to pay tax on that 2,000. Isn't that cool? That is yes. so good. That is so good, right? So you're you going to be, it. so that's the beauty of like forming an LLP company that you're going to be paying only taxes on that 2,000 pounds. Okay, so, and you know what? Like um, the thing is with the uh, with with the comp with the um, uh, tax efficiency side of service departments, you got, you you're going to be having um, twenty five percent on the purchase price as a you're going to get like twenty five percent with the um, you're going to get twenty five percent allowance. You're going to get twenty five percent allowance on yeah uh, allowance on the purchase price of the property that you bought like prior to 2006 
And on the new built properties, you get like 45% allowance, tax allowance, uh, it, which is like, I mean, with all those properties which are built after 2016. Okay, so if there are like any sort of like, I mean, allowances, for example, if you've done any sort of refurbs on those properties, then, then you have to claim it back. You can get like 100% of that refurb back as a pre-tax allowance. Okay, so yeah, uh, this is like one of the uh, best strategies in terms of properties at the moment. And, and anybody, um, I would just like strongly suggest anybody to have this strategy, I mean, which is really working in very, very good in terms of cash flow. And um, yeah, so hopefully this would have given you guys some kind of insight. And um, yeah, I'll just leave you guys to decide if you guys wanted to come like on board, please click the link below this video and I'll be like more than, um, um, more than happy, more than happy to yeah. help you guys. Yeah. Yeah.